Welcome home. This is Audio EXP for the 27th of March 2021. And the title of this episode is Free RPGs and D&D TV. Drive Through RPG launched a new sale last night and it's for tabletop RPGs that also have computer game conversions or the other way around. The top three at the time of recording are Cyberpunk Red, Werewolf the Apocalypse and the Alien RPG. As it happens, this week's quirky stats are from the realm of conversions too. This week, the OnBuy team, and I swear they don't sponsor this podcast, they just know that Geeky Blogs like stats, looked at the worst film adaptations from best-selling books. And they were better with the process this time and explained how they used Goodreads and Metacritic reviews to calculate the difference and the assumption that nobody wanted a lousy movie. The worst adaptation was Fifty Shades of Grey, which got minus 44% between the book and movie reviews. Then there was Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 2, with a minus 19 in second place. And tied with the girl on the train in third place is Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2, which got minus 17%. Was that fair? A harsh? Speaking of which, and in breaking news, Luke Crane is out at Kickstarter. A statement says he and the company had a long conversation and that it was a mutual decision. You might remember what happened. At the tail end of ZineQuest this year, Luke Crane launched a Kickstarter campaign for the perfect RPG. Some people have questioned this too. Should Kickstarter staff use Kickstarter? However, that really wasn't the problem at hand. The problem was that Dungeon World co-creator Adam Cobell was involved and that the other contributors had not been told. Cobell had previously said he would leave the RPG industry after a nasty controversy during a live actual play stream. And as you can imagine, there are all sorts of strong opinions and important nuances, but now Crane has apologised and left Kickstarter. Kickstarter are also keen to point out that Luke Crane has not been hugely involved with their game section for a while. Games, if you include computer games, bring in about a third of the of Kickstarter's cash. Anya Coombs is their director of games outreach, and I'm interested in the word what the word outreach means in this context. Is Anya responsible for chatting up sites like Dicebreaker and Polygon to get them to cover Kickstarters? Whereas I think more people might be interested in the differences between Crane's style, I mean he created ZineQuest after all, and Coombs's. How do you feel ZineQuest went this year? Kickstarter has impacted the games industry uh, through the wave of great looking games it helps get made. And that's a good thing, right? Well, for customers, yes, certainly in the short term. It's not so good for retailers who find that people need to use them less often as more games come straight from Kickstarter campaigns. It also impacts game makers like Steve Jackson Games, publishers of Munchkin and RPGs like The Fantasy Trip and GURPS. In their 2020 report, COO Phil Reed reminded us of how Kickstarter encourages gamers to move on quickly and buy the next game that catches their attention. And that's my summary of the point, though, not his precise words. As a result, in 2021, Steve Jackson Games might not launch any new game lines. They don't sell well enough. Right after launch, gamers looking for a new game already have many other new games to consider. Instead, This year, Steve Jackson Games might only support their best sellers, and that's games like Munchkin, The Fantasy Trip, and GURPS. Oh, and they will also work as hard as they can to finally deliver on their own million dollar Kickstarter in the shape of Car Wars. As customers, as games buyers, we can decide to take an active hand in this. We can support our local retailers by buying games through them. We can help publishers we like by giving their new games fair consideration. Good news on that front is the confirmed return of Free RPG Day in 2021. 
It will be held on October the 16th. Retailers who are taking part are sent boxes of free games, often quick starts and introductory adventures from the publishers sponsoring it. The idea is that if customers who make the effort to visit get rewarded with a freebie, you know, providing stocks haven't run out, that that freebie might persuade them to spend money on that RPG franchise later on. Of course, it means that only publishers with enough cash to pay for lots of freebies can afford to take part, but it's better than nothing. Free RPG Day had new owners last year. Yep, right in the middle of the lockdown. I think they did a pretty good job, from my outside perspective, of reacting and coping. But I hope 2021 is more straightforward for them. There are some freebies that I can talk about right now. The award-winning and family-friendly Hero Kids is free from drive through RPG until April the 1st. And British publisher Modifius has lots of news this week, so let's go there next. The first is a freebie too, and that's the Star Trek Adventures Klingon Quick Start. The Star Trek Adventures RPG has been bobbling along, but it looks like the Klingon-centric and core rules alternative book has done well, well enough to get its own quick start. And you can grab that at Drive Through RPG or from Modifius themselves. Modifius also have a 2D20 Fallout RPG on the way, and that's in addition to their Fallout Wasteland Warfare game. And they've launched a video trailer for this week. I think that means we're rapidly approaching a publication date reveal or something similar. In an accompanying blog post, Modifius revealed some interesting PC options. You will be able to play as a Brotherhood of Steel member, as a ghoul, as a Mr. Handy, yes, one of those floating robots, as a super mutant, and a survivor and a vault dweller too. I suspect playing as a ghoul or a super mutant might be quite a role-playing challenge, but will likely be different from your last character. And the last little bit of Modifius news is the launch of Five Parsecs from Home. Five Parsecs from Home is a new addition to their adventure wargaming reigns, joining games like Elder Scrolls, Call to Arms and Rangers of Shadow Deep. Like the two other Modifius games we just talked about, it's another sci-fi. The twist? This one can be played as a solo game. It's a solo war game. We've already looked at how the Kickstarter impact shapes the tabletop landscape, but I think we see here the lockdown's impact. Games that you don't need friends around to play are now understandably popular. Tabletop games in general are more popular than ever. Chris Metzen was a VP at the computer games giant Blizzard and often credited with world building for games like Diablo and Warcraft, and he left the company to set up Warchief Gaming. And this week, Warchief announced their first product, and it's a tabletop RPG. And it's here we make our frequent trip back to Dungeons and Dragons. Warchief Aurora Boris, a Coils of the Serpent, will be a 5e setting. Characters in Aurora Boris will have access to impressive powers, even at early levels. That's a challenge to DMs that Warchief recognises, and so tips and techniques will be added to the book. As it happens, I was able to take a look at Legendary Adventures Epic 5e, ahead of the Kickstarter launch this week, and write a review for the blog. The book's idea is that it will take your D&D games beyond level 20 and up to level 30. At that level, you can arrange meetings with the gods. The summary of my review is that if you don't need rules for this, perhaps you're happy to homebrew, then you'll have to think about whether you want them. If you're interested in giant monsters or are curious to see how somebody else handles D&D character classes after level 20, then you might. It's light on those tips and techniques that we might now expect in Coils of the Serpent, and that might put some backers off, but it might attract others. The last bit of news from the world of D&D is that the writer hired by Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast to bring a TV series to life, which means selling it to two TV stations, Derek Kolstad, has been talking about it. And he's compared it to Rambo First Blood. By that, he seems to be saying First Blood is essentially an up-close movie about one man surviving in the wilds. Yeah, it hints at a bigger picture, 
but the movie doesn't really bother too much with it, and so that's what we can expect from the D&D TV show. He's also said that he'll be setting the show at the edge of the current D&D timeline. I know, there's no such thing, because in 5e there's no default D&D setting, but that does mean we can rule out the events of yesteryear in all the official D&D settings. Right now, my money is on the D&D TV series being set in the Underdark. Kolstad wrote John Wick, and I would totally watch an action-focused Survive in the Darkness 6-8 to part adventure. You can find the video for the interview on the blog. Links are in the show notes. And shall we stick with the small screen for a bit? Yeah, let's do that. There's an incoming wave of anime trailers as the new season start. I'm going to look at doing two trailers a day, no more, on the blog for a while. There's plenty to talk about, but in the interest of time, let's just pick Mariko-chan. Mariko-chan is a horror comedy, which means it's double or nothing. It will either be great or awful. And the premise is this. Miko starts to see horrible ghosts. How does she cope with this? Miko blanks them. She pretends they are not there. I suspect the anime will work that angle, and we'll just have to see how many wacky situations spin off from potentially jump-scare encounters. Happy to be proven wrong, though. We don't even know if Mariko-chan will be picked up by a streaming platform outside Japan. Whereas... We know one of the animes that Netflix has under option is Berserker. Not the infamous Berserk, but an anime adaptation of Keanu Reeves' comic book Berserker. Netflix also has the rights to do a Berserker movie. And that's happening. Reeves will play the Berserker, a warrior with a human mother and a god of war as a father. He's cursed to live forever and find conflict as a result. He ends up working for the US government make of that what you will, and is sent on missions that no one else will touch. The comic book, which was worked on over Skype while Reeves filmed The Matrix 4, already depicts the Berserker as looking a lot like the movie star, so I think the casting was a given. And just to swing back to the world of RPGs as we near the end of this week's episode, I wanted to mention NeverEnding. NeverEnding is a site that lets you draw your own tabletop RPG character by flicking through body parts, costumes, weapons and that sort of thing until you get a representation you like. There's a Kickstarter on right now to help the platform grow so you can get some deals there but the future looks pretty good. They will be adding prosthetic options for characters. Now whether this is a representation issue for you or just because a magic powered metal arm looks badass and you want it for your character I see no downside to the option. There are two bundles worth talking about this week. The first is at the Bundle of Holding, and as a way to get lots of the OSR game, Astonishing Swordsman and Sources of Hyperborea. The second is one that I'm finding it very hard to resist, but I must save my money, and that's a humble bundle deal with Boom Studios that offers over $540 worth of their comics for just 20 bucks or so. And if you don't have money for a bundle, and didn't like any of the freebies mentioned above, can't wait for free RPG day, then my recommended plan B is for you to enter Geek Native's latest competition. I'm giving away five copies of Welcome to Professor Elemental's Garden of Escapades. That's a lasers and feelings inspired tabletop RPG full of whimsy and about the quirky steampunk chap hop singer Professor Elemental. I have an interview with the designer on the blog, and it turns out that if Wendy's can have an RPG, then so can Professor Elemental. Lastly, it's near the end of the month, so this is the last call for Geek Native's patrons to vote in the RPG Publisher Spotlight. The five candidates for April are Other Stuff Games, Micro RPG, LPG Design, Insight Entertainment, and Nightfall Games. On that note, let's wrap there, so please keep safe, and pop into the Discord server if you want to chat, and we'll see you next week.